Ask a Priest Live, and you're listening to the Station of the Cross, proclaiming the fullness of the truth with clarity and charity. Heard around the world on iCatholic Radio on your Android and Apple mobile devices. Ask a Priest Live. Guided by the Holy Spirit and honoring the magisterial teachings of the Church. Faithful Catholic priests answering questions for believers and those seeking truth. Ask a priest because Father knows best. And now, your host, Jordan Pacheco. God be praised in his angels and in his saints. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of Ask a Priest Live from the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network. As you recognize from my voice, those of you who are regular listeners, I am not your regular host, Jordan Pacheco. I am actually, and this is the day that many of you have been waiting for, I am actually the show producer, James, here at the Station of the Cross Studios in Buffalo, New York. Just filling in for a couple minutes here, Jordan's stuck in traffic, so he is scrambling to make it here to join us. But in the meantime, I am joined by a very special guest today. Today we have Father Charles Murr with us. Father Murr is, if you've ever listened to The Morning Show with Joe McLean, A Catholic Take, Father Murr is a regular guest. He is a very wonderful guest and a lifelong friend and personal assistant to Cardinal Gagnon. So, Father Murr, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And how are things? Is it Spain that you're in? Is that correct? Yes, I'm in, I'm in Seville, Spain. Things could not be better. We're in, uh, we're in full fiesta mood in Seville, and it's uh, right after Holy Week, which was a fantastic, a fantastic time here. And right now we're in uh, the, the fiestas de Sevilla, so it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Wonderful. And am I correct that it's about midnight your time, Father? Is that right? You are correct. It is midnight with one minute. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us at this late hour. But who is counting? <laughs> Eight minutes of that, yes. So if you have a question for Father Murr today for our special guest, give us a call, one 511 5483 And don't forget that you can also email your questions to priests at thestationofthecross.com or submit your question through the live chat of one of our video feeds on Facebook, Rumble, or YouTube. And again, that phone number is 1-877-511-5483. And just to kick things off, Father, I was wondering if you could just give us a little brief description of some of your background and experiences in the church. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, There's an awful lot to tell, and I'll be as brief as I can. I studied in Rome. I was in in Rome for nine years, uh, from in all of the 1970s. Uh, there, I met uh, Monsignor Mario Marini, and 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 of course later on, uh, uh, Cardinal Archbishop Gagnon, later Cardinal Gagnon. Uh, and I worked uh, for five years in the information office of the Vatican, and finished my uh, two licentiate degrees there. One in anthropological philosophy, and the other one in spiritual theology at the Gregorian University. And I went to Mexico. I worked in Mexico for 14 years until they killed my cardinal, Cardinal Juan Jose Posadas. Uh, so it was a time I walked, I walked into Mexico when it was a beautiful, beautiful situation. Um, it was the Mexico of old, the golden years, I call them. And as soon as drugs got into the blood flow of that country, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything changed almost overnight. Uh, the uh, you know the violence that's in Mexico right now. Mm-hmm. It just it was just beginning in the nineteen about nineteen eighty four, the early eighties when I got there uh, with the kidnapping of Kiki Camarena. That was the beginning of the, of the end. And anyway, I, then I worked uh, for, uh, uh, I went to school t- uh, two years in Salzburg, Austria, and then uh, continued studies at NYU in psychology with Dr. Paul Witz, a fantastic man, fantastic psychologist, and a, and a human being uh, par excellence. And uh, I was a pastor of three different parishes in Manhattan, and uh, went to San Francisco, helped out by uh, Father Joe Fezio of Ignatius Press, 
and was there for quite a while. And then uh, uh, came into, uh, I decided to retire. Thought it would be a good thing. I'm going to tell you something. I re and I retired uh, with uh, with uh, some family money that came to me. Um, I came and bought an old farm in Seville. Uh, always wanted to to be here and and to farm. I've always wanted to be a farmer. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> anyway, the uh, we have have a farm right outside of Seville, and uh, I have never been busier in my life than when I decided to retire. Incredible. I mean, I, it's emails uh, constantly, uh, telephone calls, video conferences. It's great. It's great. It's great. It keeps me alive and, and well and uh, and so young looking, right? <laughs> well, I will tell you, Father, I'm only anyway, 26 years old. That's, that's my ridiculous vitae. <laughs> I'm only 26 years old myself, so thank you for giving a sneak peek at the good life. I, I'm looking forward to it someday. Oh, but I'm telling you, it gets better. It gets better. It really does. So thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself, Father. And without further ado, I, let's say we get underway with the questions here. Our first email sure. of the day comes from Dominic from Ontario, Canada. And Dominic asks... Yes. I am a carpenter, and I've been asked to work on a project in someone's home that involves building a Muslim prayer room. I don't think there are any issues with building this, but I wanted to make sure before I commit to this project. What are your thoughts, Father? No issues at all. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. That's not a, that's, that's, that's not a problem at all. And uh, uh, no, it's simply not. It's simply not. It's, uh, it's part of your trade as a, a contractor and a carpenter and uh, use it correctly. That's all. What, what, what people are going to do with any, any particular room when you're building is kind of not your business. Uh, it's, it's simply not. You're, you're there to construct, uh, to construct what they're asking for. And there's nothing, there's nothing immoral involved in that. So go right ahead okay. and do a good job. Excellent. Thank you so much for your question and your email, Dominic. God bless you, and thanks for listening. The rest of you who are watching and listening, you are listening to Ask a Priest Live from the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network. We are here Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, or your local Station of the Cross affiliate. And kind of on that same topic, in that same general area, our next email here comes from Carolyn from Louisville, Kentucky. And Carolyn says, I was recently at Mass, and one of the prayers of the faithful said, quote, We pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters as they prepare to celebrate Ramadan. My immediate reaction was shocked that that was one of the prayers of the faithful. It seemed like it was inappropriate. First, am I correct to feel stunned by that? And if so, should I contact the priest about it? I'm very reluctant, and I'm one of those, quote, go-along-to-get-along types. But I don't want to not say anything if the appropriate thing to do is to speak up. You know, um, the Novus Ordo Mass includes, they're called petition prayers. They claim that these were um, part, of the, part of the tradition of the early church, and, I'm, and perhaps it was, people's intentions for the Mass. However, what I noticed, even when I was saying that Mass, I, I today say only the Tridentine Mass, but when I was saying that mass, I found that the, the, the petition prayers turned into like a news broadcast. <laughs> it, it was kind of a, it was kind of a crazy thing that you would get the news. There's a, let's play for, pray for the flood victims here and the tornado victims there and the this and the that. And it was, it was sort of a broadcast of what was happening, right, to begin with. I don't think that that's the place for all of that. And I certainly don't think that the, the place at mass for petitions that, that involved the community, that community, have anything to do with Ramadan and the, 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 the Muslims celebration of it, of the feast or of, the, of that, that, particular, uh, that particular season of the year that they go through. Um, no, I think it's out of place. I think it's out of place. I don't think I don't believe it has anything. I have nothing against them doing that, but I don't know why we're praying for their success. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, it's it's a funny thing that in all of those prayers for for the Muslims, for the Jews, for the Protestants of any sect, 
we fail to pray for their conversion, which would be a wonderful thing. That, I mean, that's that's really what I think we should be doing, or or praying for God to uh, illuminate us when we get a chance to speak with them and to present Christ to them, something like that. But that they have a happy Ramadan. Uh, excuse me. Uh, that's a. Uh, that's too politically correct for me. I'm sorry. In other words, in, in other words, I don't think you should. I don't. Th I think your shock is justified. <laughs> All right. I would. I would 100. percent I would 100. percent be with you, uh, Father. And I love what you say there. You know, we have forgotten, kind of in in our, and I think the worst of the ecumenical push in a way to that true love, right? True charity of us as Catholics is to pray for the conversion of, of Muslims and Jews and all people to come to the fullness of the truth. And the church has a great duty to do this. That's, that's very well said. Well, you're, but, but you're absolutely right. And not just because you agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Father Mer, I'm happy that we are. I'm happy that I finally got on, by the way, I'm so sorry, listeners and viewers all for the delay. Oh my gosh, traffic here in Denver, Father, but it is an absolute pleasure. I'm so excited for you to be on the show. It's going to be an absolutely great show today. I'm joined today, of course, by the wonderful Father Charles Murr. Ignatius from New York, I see you on the line there. I know it's going to be a great question. Go on and hang on throughout the break. We'll get right back to you uh, in just a couple of minutes. In the meantime, we have questions, Father, queuing up from Texas. We got emails pouring in. There's one from Missouri, Ohio. It's going to be an absolutely great show. Guess what? Listeners and viewers, we would absolutely love for your questions to be a part of them. So you can call in even throughout the break. Absolutely love to hear from you. 1-877-511-5483. Again, that call-in number is 1-877-511-5483. Or you can email your questions for Father today. Crease at the station of the cross.com. I'm Jordan Pacheco. Don't go anywhere, Ignatius. We'll get right to you. First call up right after the break. God bless you. Here at the Station of the Cross, we proudly bring the truths of the Catholic faith to countless listeners through radio and mobile devices, and we're grateful for the feedback we've received. Catholic radio has just been a lifesaver for me. I start my day with it. I listen to it all day long as much as I can. There's always people calling in with people who've lost children, and I love what everyone has to say and the advice of the Catholic Church and how to deal with suffering. It has given me the strength to get through the day and to get out of bed each morning. I am very grateful for it. Catholic Radio to me has been very informative on my religion. It has informed me of many things that I wasn't aware of or should have been aware of, and I've enjoyed it very much listening to it. If you've been blessed by listening to the Station of the Cross, let us know. Call 1-877-888-6279, extension 112, then share your testimonial with us. Coming up Wednesday on The Simple Truth, live at 4 p.m. Eastern, Wonder and Awe Wednesday, where we strive to be rightly filled with wonder and awe at the presence of Almighty God and all that is of Him. Have you heard of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich? Does this simple Augustinian nun and holy mystic have a message for us? Come find out on The Simple Truth, live at 4 p.m. Eastern. The Station of the Cross has many ways to keep you informed about our programming. You can view the highlights of our primetime programming schedule or the full 24-7 programming grid at both thestationofthecross.com or the free iCatholic Radio app. Just search under the Programming tab. Our website also offers a printable version for your convenience. listening to Ask a Priest Live from the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network. Have a question? Ask a priest. Call 1-877-511-5483 or email us at priests at thestationofthecross.com. God bless you listeners and viewers all. Welcome back to Ask a Priest Live. I'm your host, Jordan Pacheco. Delayed today I was, but do not worry. It is me in the flesh. I want to give a great shout out to producer and compatriot James Farmer for holding down the fort, especially with such a wonderful guest priest with us today. We are joined, of course, by Father Charles Murr. 
absolutely love to hear your questions. We got a lot of questions popping in. Ignatius, thank you so much for holding throughout the break. Very much appreciated. And what's your question for Father? Well, thank you uh, for taking my call. Uh, that was a great answer, first of all, Father, on the last question. Uh, seems like that might be a question for uh, Summa Theologica, going back to that. Um, but the question I had was about uh, confessions. A while back, uh, I was at a, I was on vacation, and I went to a mass while I was on vacation. And the priest, uh, during his homily, uh, talked about a confession he had gone over, and he basically revealed every single detail of the confession. He revealed what the sin was uh, in total, like in complete detail. And he did this about multiple different confessions. He said, this was one confession with this one guy, and this is what he confessed, and here's how the confession went. And then he said, okay, after this, this was another day. He came back. It was a similar confession. Here's what it was about. Here's another one this other day. And he went into explicit detail. He never named the person. So my question was, uh, is, is mainly what specifically constitutes uh, breaking a confessional seal, and did he do that in that moment? Because Again, he's basically revealing the entire confession, but I don't know if he's, you know, officially from a legalistic stance, uh, breaking uh, the confessional seal since he didn't name the person. So that was my question to you. That's a great, that's a great question, Ignatius. Let me answer it this way. I'll tell you a story they told me, okay, when I was, when I was first ordained. There was a dinner party, and at the dinner party, um, where the priest was invited, and there were a number of people there, and he started talking about a case of adultery that he had heard in confession. Again, he didn't mention names. He didn't mention even where it was or anything like that. But he said how shocked he was because he didn't exactly know how to answer that. It was, it was, he was a new priest. And he mentioned this was the first time he had ever heard a confession. Uh, that husband and wife who were invited to the dinner party went home that night and they had a terrible fight that almost ended in a divorce because the man's wife was very proud of the fact that she was the first person to go to confession to Father So-and-so. Are you following that? A little bit. In other words, in other words, the identity, the identity of that person came out. The priest said, I remember the first confession that I ever heard, X, Y, and Z was told to me. Well, at the party, are, are, at the dinner party, are, are, are this couple, this couple, and the woman, the wife, was very proud to say that she was the first person who had ever gone to confession to Father so-and-so. So in other words, he disclosed her confession without mentioning her name or the place or anything else. What I would say is this, a priest has to be extremely careful of confessional material. And it's funny, there was a priest who came today uh, what a magnificent priest, a young priest from Africa, uh, on fire, on fire with the, with zeal. It's, it's, it's so good to see this. It's so good to see this continuing in the church. And we were talking, he was very concerned. He's a, he was, a, he is a, a Portuguese. Uh, and he's very concerned because in Portugal, as in the United States, as in many of most of nations, they are trying right now, even as we speak, to make illegal any secret told to the priest in confession, especially involving uh, sexual abuse. In other words, if the priest would hear anything in confession regarding sexual abuse, for example, of a minor, which is a very serious thing, if he did not report that, he would be liable to be arrested and put in prison. Now, 
you've got everybody wringing, wringing his hands. Oh my God, now what are we going to do? And what are we going to do? I find the solution is very simple. The solution is a very simple one. The Catholic Church is 2,000 years old. We've learned a few things over those 2,000 years. And one of the things we learned was to hear confessions behind a screen. Now, if I hear something that somebody tells me legally I have to report behind a screen, I have no idea who said that. I didn't see that person. I don't know who said that. I can't identify that person. So I can honestly say, in a court of law, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's, it's very simple. I don't know. They're, they're trying, no, they're getting lawyers involved. In no, no, no. Why? It's very simple. It's simple, simple, simple. Um, I don't like, <laughs> I was very glad with this. Let me put it this way. I'll tell you this. I think at around 19, I was just studying theology, so in about 19, uh, 75, 76, something like that, the Vatican came out with the new way of hearing confession. And so you were supposed to have a confessional room, uh, and you're supposed to sit in, in two chairs, like a counseling session. What? How absurd is this? How absurd is this? Confession is not a counseling session. You want counseling session, you talk to the priest later on, or the priest should recommend a psychiatrist or a psychologist. That, that's a counseling session. You go into confession to confess your sins. That's what confession is about. Not to sit down and be and, and, and have, a, have a, a nice chat. You can do that. Go and, go, and see the, go and make an appointment with the priest and sit down and have a chat in the rectory. That's fine. And that's not what confession is for. But... The, the idea was this, at that time, the priest was not free to, to not hear confessions that way. In other words, you, the penitent, were free to hear, have your confession heard behind a screen or face to face with the priest in this confessional room. But the priest was not given the option I refuse to hear confessions in a confessional room. I don't want to see you. I don't want to know you. I don't want to see you. I, I want you not to be seen. And I want you not to see me. Why? Because I want you to be psychologically happy with the idea that Jesus Christ is forgiving you, not Charles Murr. And when, when you're not seeing the person, you're hearing the words. Those words are Christ's, Christ's, Christ's words of forgiveness, that absolution. It just makes all of the sense in the world. Finally, years later, Pope John Paul II gave permission to the priest also to refuse to hear confessions face to face. Now, that was a, that was a big step, and that was a big step in the right direction. When I go to hospitals and people are on their deathbeds, well, of course, I'm not going to put up a screen, right? I mean, let's be, let's be realistic. I hear a confession, but, but even, at, even at that, I don't like looking at people eye to eye when they're giving their confession. I want them to be in the presence of Christ. I'm his representative. I don't want them talking so much to me. I want them talking to Christ, and I don't want them receiving my absolution. I want them receiving Christ's forgiveness. And there are ways that make that more palpable. And one of them is in a confessional behind a screen. And I think you're going to see more of that, ironically, as, as, uh, as time presses on, because there, is, there are going to be legal matters that are going to push us right back to that, which is fine by me. I hope I answered your question. Yes. Now, would he have committed loss and uh, loss and tensia or self excommunication? That was one other quick question I had. Uh, can, can you ask answer, ask that again? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Now, now, would he have committed uh, loss and tensia or self excommunication? Because I know in canon law, when they talk about like self excommunication or serious penalties, they talk about one of the things they talk about is breaking a, a confessional seal. Would it be that extreme? Or? Breaking, 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 the, breaking the, the seal of confession is reserved, is reserved to the bishop and or to the Vatican. 
It's, not, it's I mean, it's, it's that serious a thing. No priest is to do that. First of all, if this is a, if this is a if this is a thing, it should be reported immediately to his bishop. If nothing is done, it should be reported to Rome. And this is that's a serious offense. And 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 even though he didn't he didn't mention uh, the name of the person, it doesn't matter. You can you easily can give indications without even realizing when you're talking of, of somebody's identity. It should be avoided. Let me just say this too. Every time I sit down to hear confessions, when I'm done, I go in, in before the Blessed Sacrament just for two minutes, and I ask God sincerely, as best I can, to remove from my memory everything I just heard. Now, that's not always possible. There are th some things that stay with you, uh, some things that are pretty awful. And they just stay with you. But I really ask God to remove, even from my memory, what I just got done listening to and hearing. Um, it's 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 a very good practice. I think uh, I don't want I don't want that to be ever to come out. I don't want that ever to come out in conversation. This is why, also, if I may, I know I'm. I'm it sounds like I'm going all over the place, which I am, but I'm touching different bases. This is why it's very important for priests to watch their drinking also. Because when you have a few glasses of wine and you're in a social setting, I'm not talking about falling down drunk, right? But I mean, you're in a social setting, you're, the tongue loosens and you begin to say these things. Uh, you've got to be very, very, very careful. And I think perhaps, not perhaps, I know that today, uh, the strictness of this isn't being enforced, and it really must be. It must be. It must be. Absolutely. Ignatius, that was such a tremendous question. Father, there are so many nuggets to pick out of that, which is all the more reason, listeners and viewers, that if you like the show, you can always go back and rewatch the show, YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble, as well as on all the podcasting sites, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. You guys know all those places. Absolutely excellent, Ignatius. Thank you so much for sending that question in. You're listening to Ask a Priest Live. We're on today with a special guest priest, Father Charles Murr, here to answer all of your questions, just like that great question out of New York there. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. Already halfway through our show, but we're having such a ton of fun. So go on and call in. No questions too big, no questions too small. 1-877-511-5483. Magnificat Scriptorium in the YouTube chat says, Based Father Murr. That is a title we bestow on some of our priests now and then. Very much so, Magnificat. Very much so. 1-877-511-5483. I'm Jordan Pacheco. Don't go anywhere. Next up, we have a question about habitual sin and remorse. I'll see you right after the break. God bless you. And you talk to people who were locked in sin and you can't convince them to leave their sin, it's because they don't have any fear of hell. They fear God, they don't want to offend him, but nobody talks about the fact that hell's real or that it endures forever. So you stand before the truth of God and you're illuminated completely in his truth. All you see is all the filthiness, the wretchedness, how vile you are and how you hate him. You hate the one that you stand in front of. So what if he tries to give you a hug? You hate him, you won't accept it. What if he says, please come in? I hate you, I would never come in there. This is how horrible it is. This is, this is what has to be meditated on. To die in a state of sin means that you hate God. Whether you feel like you hate God or you don't, it doesn't matter. Not having the grace of God means you hate him. That's Sermons for Everyday Living from 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern on the Station of the Cross. This is Jesuit Father Robert McTagg, your daily host of The Catholic Current, and I'm asking for your help. Folks have been asking me to answer questions on the air, so I'm asking you to send questions to my mailbag. We can do this good work together. Send us your questions at thestationofthecross.com slash askfather. That's thestationofthecross.com slash askfather. I look forward to hearing from you. 
Hear a powerful sermon you need to share with a loved one. Maybe there's a guest, prayer, or teaching segment that deserves another listen. You can listen to any of our network-produced programs at your convenience by finding us wherever you enjoy podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, and the free iCatholic Radio app. Be uplifted in your faith. Listen today at thestationofthecross.com or on your favorite podcasting platform. Did you know that live video of the show is just a few clicks away? Follow us on Facebook and YouTube at Ask a Priest Live. Search for the Station of the Cross on Rumble. Or check out our Watch Live page at thestationofthecross.com. God bless you listeners and viewers all. Welcome back to Ask a Priest Live. I'm your host, Jordan Pacheco. It's a very special episode because we have a very special guest priest, Father Charles Murr, joins us today. Absolutely great amount of questions trickling in. A lot of really fun ones on the docket. Would absolutely love to hear from you. The phone lines are open. Go on and call in 1-877-511-5483. Again, that's 1-877-511-5483. Or you can email your questions for Father today, priest at thestationofthecross.com, as well as type them up on YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble. Going to spin over to YouTube for a second here. By the way, YouTube, thank you so much. I've been telling people... We've been gaining on YouTube, I can tell, at least a subscriber rate of 10 subscribers per day. That's very much appreciated. Just another resource that we have to let Catholics know this is an absolutely great place to check out their answers. So if you haven't already, we always appreciate you no matter how you listen, whether it's on the radio, the iCatholic radio app, the website, YouTube, Facebook, or Rumble. But do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's always nice to see those subscriber numbers going up. Love this username here. I'm going to say it for the air, but Obama, your mama. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. Very cool. Asks this actually really great question, Father. Uh, they say this. I think it kind of bleeds in from last question that Ignatius from New York had about the confessional seal. But he says, can you ask, Father, what to do if you stop feeling guilty after a habitual sin? What should I do then? Oh, yeah. That's what a great question. That's a good question. Um, you do what I just got done doing about 30 minutes before this show. I went to the chapel and I asked for the grace to feel true contrition for my sins, all the sins of my past life. Um, when you ask for some spiritual gift like that, to feel contrition, to feel contrite, to feel, uh, to feel sorry, to, uh, to practice humility, to practice patience, anything in the spiritual realm, you can almost be sure that you're going, your prayer is going to be answered. If you ask for a yellow Cadillac, you can almost be sure that your prayers are not going to be answered. <laughs> I remember, I remember listening to it, it was somebody like somebody like 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 Tammy Faye and, and Jim Baker years ago. Uh, I used to watch them for entertainment purposes. They, but the, when they would get on the prosperity gospel, ask God for anything you wanted, anything like this, and and He'll give it to you because you're His son, and this and the other. But one of, and one of the th suggestions was when you ask God for a new Cadillac, don't forget to tell Him what color you wanted it. I, well, <laughs> this is absurd. I'm, I'm absolutely absurd. You ask for God. You ask God for material things. You can almost be sure you're not going to get them. You ask Him for spiritual things. You can almost be sure you're going to be you're getting an answer. Uh, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be growing spiritually so that we can take care of the material problems in life. That we can we can address everything. I'm not saying that those things aren't important. They certainly are important, but they're not as important as having this uh, disposed correctly. Ask God to feel sorry for your sins. Ask Him. Ask Him for that. Uh, I, I I just I'm, I'm telling you, it's funny because the question just I don't usually have that as was one of my prayers, but it was today, just a half an hour ago, and that's exactly that's exactly it. Ask for it, you'll get it. Believe me, you will. 
Amen. Very well said, Father. That is an absolutely great question off of YouTube here. Hey, thank you so much for sending it in. YouTube, I see that we got a lot of great questions. Going to go through as many as we can. In the meantime, the call-in line is open. Absolutely would love to hear from you, your beautiful voices out there. 1-877-511-5483. Again, that call in number, 1-877-511-5483. Or you can email your questions, of course, priests at the station of the cross.com. Going to turn over to Rumble real quick. Jerry in Tacoma has this to say. He's a fan, Father. He says, I love Father Murr. I'm a member of his unofficial fan club. Outside of the fraternity and the institute, he's the absolute best. His question is, Father, are you working on another book? You know, this is amazing because you'd think that I had that I had something to do with the questions. Just today, I, I sent a, it's amazing. But just today, I sent out a newsletter, <clears throat> a newsletter announcing my new book that I hope will be done by Christmas time. The, the title of it is, "And It Was Night." Jordan, you 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 know where that comes from? That title, "And It Was Night." It's great. Huh. It's from and the it Gospel nice. of St. John. From the Gospel of, of St. John. It's during, what, is it 1330? It's during the Last Supper when Christ takes a morsel of bread and hands it to Judas. And it said, and Judas took the morsel of bread. In Spanish, it's very, it's, 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 in Spanish and Italian, it's much better because it translates this way. Tras el pan entró, through, the, through that piece of bread entered Satan into Judas. It's, it's a very strong statement, huh? And he left. And then the gospel says, and it was night. And it was night. It's always night when we leave the Lord, huh? It's always night when we leave the Lord. But I took th that line because I think it's very beautifully uh, connected to to betrayal, and it was night. Whenever you betray a friend, when you betray God in sin, when you betray anyone, wives, husbands, children, when you betray, you're, you're immediately in night, you're in dark, you're in darkness. And that's the title of it. So it's, it's uh, and it was night, and it's going to be, I think, uh, a pretty sensational book, if I must say so myself. It's about well, it as long as, as you like it, Father. Do. There we go. As, as long as I like it, right? <laughs> anyway, yes, it's. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, give us that release date again, Father. And then you were just getting to it, but what's what's your book entail? It's it's uh, it, well, it it it's about <clears throat> it's frankly about my time in Mexico and. Uh, dealing with a, a sociopath uh, connected with narcos and the assassination of the Cardinal of Guadalajara, mm. uh, who died with 14 bullets to his torso and a coup de grace with a 45 uh, through his head, the Cardinal Archbishop of Guadalajara. It's a, it's a, it's a, let me just put it this way. It's not for the weak of heart. It's not for the weak of heart, this book. And some of the language, for those of you who are very, very particular about language, some of the language uh, is, it, it can be a little bit strong at times, but it's the way people talked and it's what, it's the, the, it's what the, what we were dealing with. I tried to write in reality and this was the reality but i but i think it's a i think it's a good book i'm i'm very happy with it it's getting there that's excellent we will we will definitely be able to to hopefully link as it comes out uh down for the show father but i'm gonna get a copy that sounds like a, a very very intriguing thing as it was night there you go jerry it is coming out you said around christmas time father i hope so and it was night should be out around christmas time just in time for a stocking filler. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says stocking filler like right. the entries of narcos in Mexico. Right. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Great question, Jerry. Yeah, we'll definitely be on the lookout for that. When we when we get it, we'll link it. Maybe, Father, we can have you on, give a review or something like that. We'll, we'll definitely see. Uh, Want to skip to this question here on YouTube. I see this. It caught my eye. JP 
uh, the eighth. Well, actually, what would that be? That's kind of funny name. Yeah, sure. It's like JP six, but then there's two other Roman numerals. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, JP. Good to see you in the chat there. But his second comment here, Father, is also I would like you all to pray for me as I'm in the process of possibly reverting to the Catholic Church. So we are very, very happy. This is the absolute perfect place for you to have your questions answered. And we will definitely pray for a reversion because God is calling you home and all of us home. But his question is this, Father. How can I reconcile the concept of making a plan for life and also surrendering to the will of God? Oh, that's easy. That's easy. I like that question. Go ahead. What is his name? Uh, JP. JP. JP, you go right ahead and make a plan. <clears throat> and make sure you put all of the details to the plan. Get it really detailed. Make an outline of the plan that you've got for life. And then when you get it all figured out and you're sure of that, that's your plan. Sit back and watch how God destroys it one point by one point by one point and gives you, throws you a whole different life that you didn't imagine. <laughs> because you make the plans, but God might have other plans for you, and I'm sure he does. I, had, I used to have a plan for life. <laughs> I used to have a plan for life, and believe me, I never thought it was going to end this way. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> so... It, it, but look, G.K. Chesterton wrote a great song, the song, song of the strange aesthetic. And, in, and in, at the end, he says, in the, in the last paragraph of the poem, you, you really should read it. It's a fantastic poem about Higgins, the, the banker, right, who, who doesn't have the faith, but he's, he's going through all of the motions. But he says, uh, now them that, that run can read it, the riddle that I write of why this poor old sinner should sin without delight. But I, I cannot read it, although I run and run of them who will not have the faith, nor will they have the fun. So you make the plan. You make the plan and watch how God pays no attention to it and sends you other things to do. It's fun. It's fun. And you, then you, you start realizing who's in charge. I think we all have to go through that. And it, it, it's, it's a part of growing up to figure out who's in charge. And when you really figure out God's in charge, then, I, then you start enjoying freedom. I hope that makes some sense. I, I've, I've been through that, and I, I, know, I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, that is uh, certainly something that I can very much resonate with as well. JP, uh, he says, thank you, Father. He seems to get a really kick, especially out of the Chesterton quote. We have someone else, Epa Rose, in the comment section says, man plans, God laughs. Yeah, that is extraordinarily true, especially <laughs> in my own life directly very much. A man plans, God laughs. So that is a very, very great question, JP. We'll also pray for your reversion. If you are a revert, you're just a confession away from getting right with God. That is like scot-free considering all these sort of hoops other denominations have to jump through. That's how much God loves you. So you should come back. It's time to come back home. Being away sucks. Hey, you're listening to Ask a Priest Live. Father Charles Murr joins us today. Absolutely great show. A lot of great questions. YouTube, I see all these questions popping off. Joan from Massachusetts, I see that you're on the line. I know it's a great question. I have about a minute till the music, Joan. So I want to make sure that you get as much time as you need to for your question. So if you hang on throughout the break, which is coming up in just a second, we will go ahead and get to you right up. In the meantime, that phone line can still be filled up through the break. 1-877-511-5483. Again, that call-in number. 1-877-511-5483 or you can email your questions for Father Murr today priests at the station of the cross.com this is an absolutely awesome show we are very much appreciative for all the love and support that's being sent our way I've been talking very positive about our subscriber counts as well as our reviews for all of our podcast sites if you would go ahead and be so kind a great way to help the show a great way to demonstrate that this is a great resource for Catholics and reverting Catholics who need the serious questions answered about the faith, go on and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. All those places really help just, again, show the quality of the show. And we are so grateful for each and every one of you for doing that. 
Again, that call in number 1-877-511-5483. Joan from Massachusetts, you'll be right up as soon as we're back. I'll see we're getting a call from James in New Hampshire. You'll be our second call. It's going to be our last segment right after. So do yourself a favor now. I keep telling you guys this every day because it's true. You can already tell two great calls on the line there. Yours could be the third. Go on a call in. You can call in even throughout the break. 1-877-511-5483. Oh my gosh, absolutely awesome show today. A lot of questions popping up. Absolutely would love for them to you to be a part of them. That's 1-877-511-5483. I'm Jordan Pacheco. We got one more segment after the break. Man, time does fly when you're having fun and it is absolutely a blast and a half. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right up with Joan from Massachusetts right when we get back. This is Ask a Priest Live. God bless you. Hi, Joe McLean here, host of A Catholic Take, heard on the Station of the Cross each weekday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern. A bold synthesis of information and inspiration, keeping you up to date on the news and issues that you may have missed from a courageous Catholic perspective. That's A Catholic Take, weekday morning, 7 a.m., right here on the Station of the Cross and the free iCatholic Radio mobile app. Download it today. God love you. The Station of the Cross began broadcasting in Buffalo, New York in 1999. Since then, our listening areas have multiplied and expanded into several states. While our mission is to grow the Catholic faith through radio and other media outlets, our apostolate is supportive of but independent from your local diocese. Through your generosity, we are able to inspire countless listeners with the gospel and help lead them to a parish to be spiritually nourished by the sacraments. Here at the Station of the Cross, we proudly bring the truths of the Catholic faith to countless listeners through radio and mobile devices, and we're grateful for the feedback we've received. It just really connected me to my faith. I always considered myself 100% Catholic, but didn't really realize that I wasn't fully practicing my faith, so I learned so much through the Station of the Cross and began just getting deeper in my prayers and feeling just so much closer to God and so well-versed in learning more about the Bible and more about what actually it means to be Catholic. So it became very, very important to me, and I listen to the radio station daily, and I absolutely love it. I make it a regular practice of donating every time they have their their fundraising and just love it and wouldn't want it to ever go away. If you've been blessed by listening to the Station of the Cross, let us know. Call 1-877-888-6279, extension 112. Then share your testimonial with us. Enjoying the show? Catch up on podcasts of past episodes on your favorite platform. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, TuneIn, and the free iCatholic Radio mobile app. God bless you listeners and viewers all, and welcome back to Ask a Priest Live. I'm your host, Jordan Pacheco. It's a very special episode today because we have a very special guest priest. It's Father Charles Murr, and we only have about 10 more minutes of the show left. So as you hear me always say, go on and call in. If you have your question, we'll try to squeeze you in. 1-877-511-5483. Again, that's 1-877-511-5483. Joan, thank you so much for being patient throughout the break. You're an absolute trooper. And what's your question for Father? Okay. Um, on Sunday, when I go to church on Sunday, there's a young man who, uh, he's in the choir. And after the Mass is over, an extraordinary minister gives out Holy Communion to the choir. And um, he takes Holy Communion, and then he goes in his pocket, and he gets, I think, a napkin, and takes another host and brings it home to his wife, who is sick. Now, I don't understand why does he have to do that when his, he can hello how to say um, a, a, a prayer, you know. Uh, he doesn't have to bring our Lord home in his pocket. I don't know what to think about it. It, it hurts me every Sunday.
Yeah, should I, I, I would uh, be happy to respond to that. Uh, I, I, I sort of agree with you, but I also understand him. Uh, what I disagree with is the the reverence, or I should say, the lack of reverence that, anyway, the, uh, from from your point of view, that he's giving to the consecrated host. That's a problem. And here's the problem: uh, when I take communion to the sick. And if somebody is with me in the car, I have to drive or I'm driven. We pray all the time that we're that we're driving the rosary or or some other prayers uh, until we get to to the to the place where where the sick person is who is going to receive Holy Communion. We don't have a conversation. We don't stop and talk to people. This and the other thing. You're carrying our Lord. I, I, I don't understand. Do people understand this? You're carrying Jesus Christ. You don't stop and talk. You don't just put him in your pocket and go about your business. Stop at the drugstore on your way home or something. This, that's, this is the problem. And this is, what people, this is what people are suffering from today. When they see these kinds of things, they start losing faith in the real presence of our Lord. And this is, this is a sin that's 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 common all over the Western world, all over the Western Church. Uh, it has to be stopped. It has to be stopped. Now, this man could certainly take Holy Communion home to his sick wife if he's an extraordinary minister. Uh, that would be fine. But he should learn how to respect and and carry that the, that sacred body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. Uh, it's nothing. It's it's a very serious responsibility, and I don't think people give it that serious. I don't think they do not give it the seriousness it requires. I hope I've answered that, Joan. Amen. Amen. Joan, that is a great question. I wonder, Father, if this is a case where maybe she speaks to the priest, because it seems like if the policy of their parish is that uh, it's an extraordinary minister who's handing out communion here, and if it's known by the priest, maybe it's just a question of really restoring the proper reverence and and um, how to properly handle our Lord uh, in body, blood, soul, and divinity in the host. Not just putting it in our pocket, but maybe, I don't know, Joan, if your parish has a deacon or the priest themselves who maybe could deliver communion to the wife, maybe have a relationship with this young man, uh, pray for his wife, that sort of thing. Um, that, that's a lot of factors I can imagine. But an absolutely great call. Hey, thank you so much for sending it in. 1-877-511-5483. Going to skip over here to beautiful New Hampshire and James. Hey, James, thank you so much for calling in. And what's your question for Father? Thank you so much. So uh, a couple of Bible verses talks about humility. I think Christ says in Matthew 18, 3, says, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will, you will never uh, get into the kingdom of heaven. And then, and then Galatians 1.10, it says, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. Uh, so my question is, so many Catholics nowadays are lost and trying to get clickbaits, you know, become famous, social status, and they're, they're not, uh, how, how do, what type of advice or tips do you give Catholics who want to uh, become humble and meek, just like Christ says, but, you know, if you want to enter heaven, you have to be uh, meek and humble, and I see a lot of Catholics just pushing their podcasts, et cetera, et cetera, and movies and books, and just becoming vainglorious and full of pride and trying to win the approval of men rather than of God, so what type of advice do you have for these uh, Catholics who are falling away? That's a good question. I would answer it this way. You can be humble in any station of life. There are kings who are known for their humility. So it doesn't really matter where you're at or what you're doing, what your profession is, what, what, you're, what you're about. Humility is available to every human being. And it's certainly available to every Christian. It's a Christian virtue. Um, Thomas Aquinas says this too, and I think it's a great, it's a great realization about uh, a great answer for humility. Aquinas says, humility is simply honesty. It's being honest about yourself. That's all. When you're honest about yourself, first of all, with yourself, 
to be honest about yourself with yourself, you have to be humble. You have to be humble. I mean, uh, my goodness, who's, who's, the, who, who's the big deal? Who's the big deal who can add one minute to his life? Who's the great man who can, who can, uh, who can convert the world, this, that, and the other? No one. No one. That, that, that belongs to God. Uh, however, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be successful or you cannot be successful in life. I'm not saying that. It's how you become successful. And humility has to be a part of that. I know some, I know some, some great priests, lawyers, doctors, garbage men, taxi drivers, who are fantastic in what they're doing, and they're humble. But they're very, they're very popular and very accepted by people, probably because of their humility, probably because of it. Uh, it's, humility is attractive. I find people who are humble attractive because they're not putting on airs. It's just, uh, it's so much easier to talk to them too. And because, why? Because we get right back to what I was saying about Aquinas, because they're honest. They're simply honest about themselves. So, but don't say that, that don't, we can't say that, that people can't be successful. They can be successful. You can become a, a gazillionaire if you want it. That's what you want. And you can be humble. You can, you can know how to use what you've got for the good of others. That's humility. That is an absolutely beautiful answer, Father. And James, that is a very tremendous question. A very, very important question, even for us who very much appreciates our subscriber numbers and our scope growth for the show. But humility, humility, humility. We do it because we are motivated for love of Christ. We want to get his message and your answers out there to as many men's hearts as possible that they may be converted to him. Father, it has been such a tremendous show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before you go, will you leave us with your blessing? Are we finished? This is it? That went too quickly. That's it. We did it. <laughs> that was an hour? Holy Toledo. That's that amazing. Was the, yeah, I yes, know. Yes, I'll give you a Absolutely. I'll give you a blessing. Dominus vobiscum et cum spiritu tuo benedictio bdei omnipotent patris filius spiritus sanctus gender super vos et manit semper. Amen. Thank you very much for the privilege of being with you very much yeah absolutely right it was an absolutely great show and thank you all listeners and viewers tomorrow's also going to be another great show father elias mary mills franciscans of the immaculate joins me tomorrow i'll see you all tomorrow 6 p.m eastern time i'm jordan pacheco this is ask a priest live god bless you